Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to our channel. Today I would like to show you one place which I find perhaps one of the most interesting and unusual museums you can visit in Ukraine. And this is the National Museum of Chernobyl, which I find the must-visit location for anyone who will be in Kiev and interested in this subject. At this place you have a chance to walk over a copy of RBMK nuclear reactor shield. Watch the accident unfolding in front of you on this one-of-a-kind model, see a red forest to a fragment and even make a phone call back to 1986. So like this video, subscribe and let's go! The museum was established in 1992 and in its 30 years history became prominent research, educational and exhibition facility that nowadays have more than 7000 Chernobyl artifacts. And all of that is housed in the historical fire department building at Podil district of Kiev. There are three large holes here, but first you need to walk up by these stairs, and above them there are dozens of road signs with the names of the evacuated towns, villages and neighborhoods. And here you go. The core problem of documenting Chernobyl is that the number of events that have been happening simultaneously back in the times, it, you know, it's really often hard to comprehend. So here, to illustrate this, you'll find many such multi-dimensional installations that look kind of advancing by the timeline, and the surrounding exhibits become the snapshots of particular events. But the focal point is 1.33 am on April 26, 1986, where the accident happened. It all starts from the origins, so here you can see how the Chernobyl nuclear power plant project actually started. There is a detailed model of the infamous Unit 4, and you can see how complex was this facility, see the reactor design in details. And in fact, you can see it in action, because like many things here, this model is interactive. And then, the timeline continues to advance to the insane density of events. For example, the operation for stopping the fire inside the reactor building using the helicopters, evacuation of the area, establishing the security perimeter around the newly created zone, the operations of the government task force led by Boris Sherbina and Ivan Sivayev. There are documents, there are stories, there are people, and you probably noticed that some portraits have this radiation mark. This means that this person passed it away after the Chernobyl events. At the end of this hall, behind this movable panel, there is a true highlight. It's a very unique thing, because it's one of a kind model of the developing accident. You know, by my personal statistics, only a very few people could actually guess right how exactly does this thing works. Uh, I suggest write me in the comments your ideas and in the end of this episode I will tell you the correct answer. So the entire demonstration takes around 4 minutes, I will speed it just a little bit and unedited version you can find on our Patreon page, uh, because there is a full video and the link is in the description below. So here we see a 700 meter long main structure of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and on the left these two brownish structures with the tall chimney in between, that's uh, units 1 and 2, and closer to us are the units 3 and 4, uh, there is also this iconic vent over them. And on the far background there is a construction of the units 5 and 6 that was never completed. And here starts this scary April night. It is followed by the period of dealing with the challenges that were never seen before. In the end, we can see the completion of the shelter object, the 
famous sarcophagus. You know, I remember seeing this when I was seven years old, I think, yeah? and that was pretty a powerful experience, uh, very impressive. So, you know, still I find this very thing much more cool than any, say, plasma television with a fancy 3D presentation. Well, in reality, who can be surprised nowadays with just a TV, right? So, let me know in the comments what do you think. The construction of this sarcophagus was a task of a complexity that actually was never seen before, but it was preceded by a risky cleanup operation of removing the debris, the graphite fragments that were scattered across the roofs, and given that only a few types of robots could less more survive the extreme levels of radiation, it was made a hard decision to send people there. So here in this museum you can see the replica of the makeshift protective suits of that bio-robots. There are so many things here that when you walk around it's really easy to get overwhelmed. But in reality it was the same back in 1986. Uh, you know, a good insight gives this formerly classified map on the wall which outlines the deployment of forces, cleanup points and the checkpoints. Even very, very far from power plant itself. They were located up to around Kiev. And all this had been happening at the same time. Just think about this. But a bit further, there is even more unusual map of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. This red light marks the contamination density, and in the most bright spot is the power plant and the site of the city of Pripyat. By the way, soon we are going to have a lot of new videos on virtually unknown facts about the zone and Pripyat in particular, so do not forget to subscribe so you won't miss that. The whole behind that map tells a story of dealing with radiation, and here in a glass jar you can see a branch of an actual pine tree from the real red forest. It was the area close to the power plant that was injured so badly that the trees there pretty quickly turned rusty colored. The trees were later buried, so this jar is just one of very few remaining pieces. And also here you can see a large collection of various dosimeters and radiation monitors. This part is under some updating because some devices will no longer be just static displays. For instance, there is a SB4 contamination monitor. Well, I believe some of you who visited with us the Chernobyl nuclear power plant have seen the devices, for example, in the famous golden corridor mounted on the walls. And uh, soon we are going to have a video about them, so do not forget to subscribe in order not to miss it. But some devices you can already try in action. For instance, this is SB04 human contamination monitor. These devices you have seen uh, at the various checkpoints, also they are at the power plant and you need to pass them to exit. So they check around uh, 30 points on your body and if everything is good, this gate will be unlocked. But if no, you will see it right here. But there is much more. The next, the largest hole, explains the painful the human side of the disaster. Because Chernobyl land had a really long history that goes for thousands of years, and many neighborhoods in the nowadays zone are often over 300 years old. So here we can find various artifacts of the traditional culture of this region under these wood-carved windows of now lost homes, and all of them are surrounding a replica of the upper biological shield of the RBMK-1000 reactor. And actually you can walk over it. So this place is for lectures, lessons, exhibitions, and also here the former inhabitants of Pripyat meet each other on the 4th of February, the birthday of now Ghost City. In the corner of this hall there is one cool thing. So the same phone booths you can find in abandoned city of Pripyat, but here they are up and intact and you can take the phone call and dial to 9086. So every number you dial will let you listen to the actual historical phone record, that or another, from the power plant or from the zone. 
So now it is the time for the promised answer. So you probably heard some relays clicking during the demonstration of the diorama. So the thing is, the diorama is fully mechanical. It consists of a few large models of the same size that show the power plant at the different stages of the accident. And then they are automatically raised and lowered by a special mechanism. But you have here also a smooth visual transition, which is made by the special custom-made mirror system. If you receive many requests in the comments, then we will ask museum to let us make a video about the technical side of operation of this thing, which is really interesting. So please let us know if you would like to see that. The next week is the anniversary of the Russian invasion to Ukraine that started exactly from the Chernobyl zone. So next week we are going to have a pretty hard video about that, uh, because, you know, there is much to say, uh, we have seen also pretty much, and uh, that worth your attention. So here, in this museum, at the ground floor, there is exhibition about these events, and we will talk about it as well. So, for now, do not forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you won't miss that. And also, if you want more, join us on Patreon to get the full version of this very episode and also various archive content virtually unknown to the Western audience. So, for now, that's it for today and see you next time.